So today I'm just here to do a few combat tips for you. Um, the first one's going to be about how to trigger surprise and why it's a good idea to try to as often as possible. So a surprise round happens when you can see a target, it can't see you, and, um, and you attack it basically. So you can use pretty much any form of attack. You can shoot it with a crossbow for example. Um, but the early in the game, generally, I think the best thing to do is to just do a simple charge. Um, and the best character to charge with normally is your heaviest armor, but slowest moving character. If you've got multiple characters, sorry, if you've got, for example, um, two characters with similar AC, but one slower than the other, try and charge with the slowest one. If you've got multiple characters, um, and one of the faster ones has the highest AC. I'd tend to charge with the highest AC one again anyway, actually. Highest AC is generally good because what happens then is if there are any other enemies around, then um, they will target their attacks on the character that's most aggressive and closest to them and has attempted to hurt them. So as I was saying, centipede hasn't seen me. I've seen the centipede. I can then charge it, which will start combat. All the initiative rolls are done, checked out here. Centipede is dead. Next thing, um, Camellia can fire on with a crossbow and miss. And then Akka can come up. And I would try and keep him behind Sela because she's got better armor. I'm going to actually delay his action. Now, I could advance him ahead of them. It depends on how the AI is going to behave. I think the AI is probably going to be locked on her. So if I advance her in ahead and attack, like while staying out of um, direct contact, I should be able to get attacks of opportunity as they move past. But that's dependent upon the AC, the targeting, the AI is still targeting Sela. I'm not sure it will. So I'm just going to pass my move action this turn could have delayed it but I want to keep my initiative high for the following round because if you delay your initiative on the trail up here um, your initiative will remain delayed throughout the rest of the combat so there we go now the easiest target for Sela here is the one that's adjacent to Akka she'll get plus two to hit so she's going to go and target that one I'm going to not move her she can stay put if she moves she'll um, get attacks of opportunity from these guys they'll have to strike at her which is really just not a good idea and then Akka can move in and attack that scorpion sorry scorpion what we're talking about centipede I can tell the difference between a multi a number of legs on an insect oh, I'm sorry not an insect neither of them are insects oh, I'm not having a good day today <laughs> I think I've been awake for far too long anyway um, as long as I kill all these centipedes, I'll be happy. Oh. Seems to be trading misses now. The joys of low-level Pathfinder. Look at that. Excellent. Okay, so that's the end of the combat. Um, next, I think I will find a doorway, which may have some enemies behind it, and show you a method of how to safely enter combat um, through a doorway, which sounds like a pretty obscure thing, but it's actually kind of useful to know. So I'll see you a bit later. Okay, I actually thought of another little short combat video to do um, before I do the how to go through a door safely one. Now, this one is called the Zerg Rush Maneuver, and you have to use real time with pause mode for it. It's actually pretty straightforward. What you do is you first check everyone can charge the target. Okay, this all looks good. As long as these are all turning out valid, the charge will go through, so that's fine. Okay, might as well even 
Stephen Windock, my archer, will also take part in the Zerg rush. I guess she's probably in range. Yes. Okay, so all you do now is you make sure the game's paused, and then you select everyone and individually order them all to charge the target, like this. Again, it's from supply, so the target's flat footed. So you'll. It's not obvious that you're getting surprise action, but you kind of are. So what happens now is you just release pause and let everything go. Okay, pause action comes up. And you Zerg rushed him, and he's dead. And and that is the really quick Zerg rush target, um, Zerg rush tactic. <laughs> Hope you liked it. Now this one is the how to go safely through a doorway. Um, the first thing you want to do is you want to look up to find which character has the highest stealth score. In my case, I believe that it's this dog here. So he's very stealthy. He's going to be my scout in this situation. Um, in a few levels time he won't be as stealthy to be fair. He's going to be too big to be stealthy. But for the moment he's the guy. So first thing you want to do is make him hide in the shadows and just sneak his way up to this door here. Now I have a suspicion, you can't really see beyond it, and if you're not careful, anyone, like this guy here, who might be lurking on the other side, can, um, can have a go at, um, can spot you and trigger combat, possibly starting a surprise round, which is really not something you want. So, dog will stay put there at the moment, you won't have to make any more stealth checks. Um, Camilla, she's not the most stealthy, but she does have a rank in stealth. I gave her one rank. Um, I gave her a heavy crossbow as well. And what I'm going to do with her is I'm going to sneak her in um, next to the dog and then take a pot shot at this neophyte wizard here because he's quite annoying. This guy, the cultist champion, has very high AC um, and is. Well, we'll basically get in the way while the wizard keeps casting annoying spells at you. So, the thing to do with Camellia is stealth her up as well. She's not great at it, but she's far enough away that hopefully they won't spot her and sneak into this corner here. And once you've done that, everyone else I just want to stack just outside the door so they don't have too far to walk in and get involved in the combat. Okay, everything's set. So first thing to do is we're going to trigger um, trigger combat by having a shot at the wizard. Probably won't hit. And what's the AC of a flat-footed wizard? 14, you see. I need to run nine or more. I could do it. It might happen. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna arcane. I'm gonna enchant the um, crossbow. So now I get an extra plus one to hit. So oh, there we go. Plus one is plus one. It's always worth having. Oh, I'll also make sure I'm in turn-based mode, because it would be silly not to me. And that worked out quite nicely. So we have one dead wizard. Triggered a surprise round as normal. Um, dog's going to charge at the champion. Flat-footed AC of 19. Dog's not likely to hit it, to be fair. But it's worth a go. No, I didn't think so. Um, next, when dog will move up. Akka will move in. He's got a glaive at the moment, so he can attack from a rank back. Sela will move forward. The dog, I'm actually going to delay for a second. Yep, so I'll voluntarily move it behind Camellia's turn. So, what she's got, she's got an ability called Evil Eye, which I can then use to reduce the champion's AC for one or more rounds only for one round. That's a bit naff. So his flat foot AC is now 17. The dog's base attack bonus is still on. He's not going to do it. He's not going to hit him. Never try, but it's not going to happen, is it? Oh, he did. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I didn't expect that to actually come off. The advantage of that is now I've tripped him. Um, he's going to stand up and again be flat footed to attacks from everyone who's got reach so he should be in range and those two should both be in range so I should get three more attacks on him oh no he's not in range oh, well that's 
disappointing. Thought it was, should have been close enough. Oh well, doesn't matter. Um, because I very nearly got the point where I've almost levelled up, I'm actually going to waste a smite evil on him. Just to make sure I try and hit him. Because he is notoriously tricky to hit, these guys. This is why you don't want a mage standing behind him taking pot shots at you with magic spells. <laughs> so there we go. That was how to sneak through a door safely. Um, the last little tutorial thing I'm going to do in this video will be involving a certain elemental lurking in the basement. So I'm just going to show you how to beat that. And a large part of it, um, actually, I'm in this room here at the moment. It's a little side antechamber from here, and that's the main entrance to the Madness Maze. The, uh, the elemental's down here somewhere. Um, but a large part of how to beat it is contained within these chests. Uh, there's a couple of potions here that would be very useful for me. Um, and it involves using appropriate buffs for the challenge. So, there we go. I hope you'll stick around for that. I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so this is the elemental that I mentioned previously. As you can see, it's a pretty nasty guy. Um, I'm playing on core difficulty, so it's um, slightly unpleasant. It has five points of damage reduction, it freezes you if it hits, and it has quite a high attack bonus. Like, it's not nice. At least I'm not playing on Unfair. <laughs> um, I don't really enjoy playing Unfair, it's too stressful. I can do it, but I just don't enjoy it. Um, so, I'm going to show you how I prep to fight it. First thing I do is I choose my tank. In this case, my tank's going to be Wendorg, because she's going to have overall the best AC eventually when I finish with her. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get her to cast a bark skin on her. And then I'm going to get her to drink a potion of resist cold, because that lasts a, a nice long time. Um, I'm also going to get her to drink a potion of reduced person because hmm. that will give her a plus one size bonus. Thinking about it, I should be alright. I mean if it's got mine at five damage reduction she's going to have a struggle hurting it at all anyway. Might give the reduced potion a miss this time. I normally have um, Camellia as the, ta as the tank but this time I'm because of the party I've got, I've got it set up, it's going to be Wendorg. So Wendorg's AC is now mm, decent enough. 25 is okay, but I think I can probably do even better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast a Shield of Faith to get her AC to 27, which means the elemental is going to need 18s to hit her. So the next thing to do is to get its attention with Wendorg. Oh, the other thing I have to do is um, this dog here needs to drink a potion of resist cold as well because otherwise when it bites the elemental it's going to get hurt and might as well top up its hit points as well. It's probably a wise move. Okay, the elemental should focus on Wendorg though, so crossed fingers. The other bit of prep I've done is I've just fought another fight recently, my buffs are lingering over, I've still got a couple of minutes of enlarged person, bless and build strength on senior. Sealer, if I can talk properly. So she has a decent attack bonus. Um, Wendorg and her dog have an additional plus two to hit as well because they're a mad dog and its companion. So Wendorg, I've leveled up two levels of mad dog. Um, that will give her like plus 11 attack bonus. So again, she should hit, probably won't hurt it much. The dog should be able to do some damage to it. And then the last thing is Camellia. Normally, with Camellia in this fight, um, I would be using um, there's a scroll I have of cure of of cause inflict critical runes, which can do a decent amount of damage. Problem being that the elemental is 
Mm, let's have a look at its will save again. Will save plus six. It's got a 50 50 chance of taking very little damage from it. I'll probably hit, probably won't hurt it much. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be initially using an evil eye on it, then I'm going to use an arcane weapon enchant. Actually, I might as well use an arcane weapon enchant to begin with. Sorry, spirit weapon enchant um, to begin with, and then use an evil eye. So she can do that. Um, yeah, let's see how this goes. Cautiously optimistic about it. The other thing I'm going to do is delay my action um, until the elemental takes its turn. In this case, when there's only one opponent, it doesn't really matter if you go first or it goes first. The main difference here is, if the elemental goes first and moves, it sacrifices being able to do two attacks. So I want it to come to me, so it'll lose an attack on the first round. Yeah, that was relatively painless. Now she's actually going to delay until after her dog, because... Um, just because. So... Evil Eye Hex. Saving throw failed. Now that's really handy. That means its AC has dropped to 16, which is quite hittable. So that's good news. She can move up a bit, get in point blank range distance. Um, As you can see, actually hurting this thing is its not easy to get past damage reduction. Mm, not much else you can do really. Okay, fingers crossed this should be the round. And there we go. And that's how you kill a large water elemental um, without taking too much damage. So if you like the video, um, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one. Have a good one.